Hello everyone, in this video we will cover the section 1.8. In this section we will see linear transformations. Uh, a transformation, first we will see the definition of the transformation. So, a transformation or function or mapping denoted by bigger T from Rn to Rm is a rule that assigns to each vector x in Rn a vector t of x in uh, Rn. So we consider uh, the transformation as a rule from the set of uh, vectors in Rn, uh, the set of vectors which is written as Rn to another uh, set of vectors which is written as Rn. Okay? We take all of vectors in Rn, and uh, theoretically we write x. So it corresponds to another vector in Rn, which is denoted by t of x. If you remember from calculus 1, a function, which is a single variable function, is uh, a rule from uh, the set of points to uh, a set of points. Okay, and the variable is written as x like this one, so f of x will be another point, okay, or number for single variable function. And you know also multi variable functions, for example, if the function is a rule from r square to r, so we obtain uh, two variables, two independent variables for functions x, y, if you remember. So it corresponds to a point f of x, y. Uh, for example, it is defined as x squared plus y squared, if you remember from calculus 2. And this one can be, for example, uh, x squared. Okay? And so, namely, we are interested in points for functions that we have learned uh, in calculus but here we have uh, a thing which is called transformation like the functions and it is a rule between uh, the set of vectors the set of vectors and if we consider the position vectors in Rn and Rm also it can be considered as a function uh, if by using the terminal points of the position vectors in Rn and Rm. Uh, but uh, for talking about a connection between vector spaces, between uh, the set of vectors, so we say this thing as a transformation. Okay. So the set Rn is called domain of t this one this is the domain domain and the second space rn is called the codomain okay codomain of the transformation. The notation written here indicates is, indicates that the domain of T is Rn and the codomain is Rm. Okay? This one is codomain and the first one Rn. Namely, we consider all vectors here and it uh, corresponds to a set of vectors in Rm. can be itself or a subset of this uh, space Rn. For x in Rn, the vector t of x in the codomain is called the image of x under the action of t. Okay, the image of x is written as t of x under t, and this is a vector in the codomain Rn. The set of all images is called the range of t. We have the codomain of the transformation and uh, the images of all vectors in the domain uh, will form uh, a set of vectors in Rm can be itself or its uh, subset. So it is called the range 
of t. And in set notation, it can be written as the range uh, is equal to, it consists of all the vectors uh, denoted by t of x such that x is in the domain of the uh, transformation. Okay. This is the set notation for the range of the transformation. And graphically, we see if we consider this is uh, the domain of the transformation, uh, this is the transformation of the, this is the domain of the transformation, and the range will be uh, a set of vectors, can be a subset of the codomain or can be the codomain of the transformation. It is depending on the definition of the transformation. Uh, for each x in R and T of x is computed as A times x, where A is an M by N matrix. So, so uh, if T of x is defined in this form, so we say that it is a matrix transformation and it is denoted by x A times x. Okay. It is a matrix uh, transformation. Observe that the domain of T is Rn when A has n columns and the codomain of T is Rm when each column of A has m entries. If we define the transformation T from Rn to Rm as uh, T of X is the product of the matrix A and the vector X. So X is in Rn, which means that the number of components of the vector X will be N. In matrix notation, it is written as M by 1 matrix. Okay. And you see T of X is a vector in Rn. Therefore, the number of components for this vector should be has to be m, which means that the result of the product should be a vector. In matrix notation, it is written as m by 1, okay, m by 1. m by 1. So to get m by 1 matrix, the size of the matrix A should be m by n. By cancelling the common number n, so we obtain m by 1 matrix, okay, which is written as t of x. Therefore, the size of the matrix A should be m by n, namely we have m rows and n columns. m is the dimension of the second space Rm and n is the dimension of uh, the domain of the transformation, we will see the definition of dimension and you will understand very well. So, okay, after understanding this special definition, let's see an example. And by the way, the range of T is the set of all tra linear tra combinations of the columns of the matrix A because each image is of the form A times X for this special definition. If you remember the definition of the product of a matrix and vector, you know, it is the linear combination of columns of the matrix A, the linear combination of columns like A1, X1, if you remember, plus A2, X2. How many columns do we have? N columns do we have? And M rows we have. Um, and so on, uh, and so on, m by n matrix, we have m rows and n columns, and uh, this one should be equal to a n x n, namely the addition of a times x1 plus a2 times x2, 
blah blah a n times x n and each vector has m uh, components since we have m rows and the result will be m by uh, namely t of x will be m by 1 matrix okay you see the transformation is uh, defined as a linear combination of the columns of the matrix a and we take all linear combinations of the columns of the matrix a and we have a set and therefore the range of t can be considered as the set of all linear combinations okay let's see an example the matrix a is defined here which is 3 by 2 matrix we have three rows and two columns and we have u b and c which are the vectors u is in r square b and c are in r cube so define a transformation by t of x is equal to a times x what is n what is m so they are determined according to the size of the given matrix uh, so we have 3 by 2 matrix and to define the product x should be 2 by 1 matrix 2 by 1 matrix and the result will be t of x uh, will be 3 by 1 matrix 3 by 1 matrix therefore t is a transformation from so we have two components for the vector x therefore it is a row from r square uh, to so we have a vector which has three components you see to r cube okay x corresponds to a vector t of x uh, defined by a times x and a is given here okay so the first question is that uh, let's find t of u the image of u under the transformation t so we know uh, a the matrix a and the vector x you see the theoretical result of the product uh, namely if you remember the definition of the product of a matrix and the vector so we use the columns of the matrix A and the entries of the vector. The first column, let's say A1, and the second is A2. So T of X is actually uh, A1 times X1 plus A2 times X2. Okay? And the result will be the last one. Okay, this one. Easily you can find. And you can use directly the uh, last uh, vector which is written here. Just you will write 2 and minus 1 for x1 and x2 to find the image of you under the transformation. Or uh, again, we can apply the product written here, a times u. Instead of x, we write u u has the components 2 and minus 1 similarly it is uh, a time a1 times 2 plus uh, a2 times minus 1 therefore we obtain 2 6 minus 2 for the first term and for the second term we have uh, 3 minus 5 and minus 7 from here this one minus 7 and uh, we have 5 uh, 1 minus 9 okay you see this is the image of the vector u under t. So, uh, from r square to r cube, we have a connection between them. Uh, 
by writing a vector which has two components we obtain another vector which has three components okay we, uh, com uh, we uh, construct a connection between the vectors and the plane and in the space find an x in r square whose image under t is b the question says that we should find uh, some vector in the domain such that uh, the image of this vector under the tra transformation has to be equal to the vector b and we know the components of the vector b given in the question you see so can we find such an x uh, satisfying this condition namely uh, mathematically we should write uh, we, we should find an x in the domain such that the image has to be equal to the vector b and by writing the definition of the transformation which is the matrix transformation so we obtain a times x is equal to b and our aim is to find x actually we have uh, a system of linear equations and you know how we can find the solution for this first we should find the echelon form the augmented matrix which is written here you see theoretically namely first we write the coefficient matrix and the last column will be the vector b therefore we will find the solution of this system a times x is equal to b and the augmented matrix is written here the coefficient matrix and the vector b you see and after necessary row operations you will obtain the echelon form or reduced echelon form of the augmented matrix like this and we don't have any uh, problem for the third row when we look at the second row we can find the uh, second component the second variable of the system which is equal to 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 this one 1 over 2 and x1 is equal to uh, 3 over 5 uh, 3 over 5 Uh, 3 over 5 and the image of this x under t is given is the given vector b namely we can find such an x name, whose image is the vector b under the transformation uh, t okay and uh, if you look at carefully the reduced echelon form of the augmented matrix we have exactly one solution we have the only solution we don't have infinitely many solutions the system is consistent but we have exactly one solution the third question is there more than uh, x1 x whose image under t is equal to uh, b we can find another x whose image under t is equal to the same vector so uh, from the second question it is clear that uh, the equation namely a times uh, x is equal to b has a unique solution okay we have exactly one solution so there is exactly one x whose image is b which means that there is no another x whose image under t is b okay so the third the last question determine if c is in the range of the transformation t what is c c is a vector in the codomain of the transformation which have three components you see three two five and we should find we should determine whether c is in the range of the transformation which means that uh, if you remember the set notation of the range written here c should be 
in the form t of x t of x and we should find at least one x in the domain of uh, the transformation transformation such that t of x should be equal to uh, c should be equal to c namely p y t of x is equal to uh, c okay and x is in the domain of the transformation and we know the components of c and writing the definition of the transformation we obtain another system ax times c and if you find at least one solution for the system so we can say c is uh, in the range of the transformation and c is the image of some x in the domain so to find the answer we we'll reduce the augmented matrix again the coefficient matrix and the vector c after necessary row operations the uh, reduced echelon form uh, will be like this and when we look at the third row so we have 0 is uh, equal to minus 35 therefore this is it is not possible there is an impossible situation here it shows that the system is inconsistent okay we, there is no solution for the system therefore c is not in the range of t because we cannot find such an x uh, such that its image is the vector c okay since there is no solution c is not in the range of the transformation another example uh, we have two by two matrix and the entries are one three zero one so the transformation from R square to itself defined by a times x this one so it is called a shear transformation it can be shown that if t acts on each point in the square shown in this figure if you consider a square you see 2 by 2 square uh, then the set of images forms the shaded parallelogram when we uh, find the images of all points in the square so we obtain this one a shaded parallelogram which is very interesting okay by applying the transformation the the square becomes a parallelogram the square becomes a parallelogram so the key idea is to show that T maps line segments onto line segments and then to check that the corners of the square map onto the vertices of the parallelogram. Uh, by considering the position vectors of all points in the square, so we can f use the transformation because the transformation is a rule between uh, the vector spaces, the set of vectors. <clears throat> and uh, by using the definition just and by considering the corner points of the square so we can see the image intuitively t of x is defined by a times x which means that uh, the matrix a1301 and the vector x uh, for example let's consider the left upper corner point of the square which has the components uh, 0 2 actually we consider its position vector this one uh, sorry uh, the position vector will be like that the position vector 
uh, will be in this form and you see the direction and the length of this vector which is equal to 2 and uh, the terminal point will be the upper left corner point of the square what is the image of this vector so writing the components 0 2 and using the definition of the product the first entry is 0 therefore uh, we don't need to write this product for the first column since the first entry is 0 and the second becomes 2 times 3 6 2 times 1 is equal to uh, 2 so the left corner point of uh, the new, new left corner point will be uh, let's 6 2 right here uh, this one okay 6 2 uh, when we consider the uh, corner point which is corresponding to the origin okay left bottom corner point uh, since the components are zero uh, named a times the zero vector so the result will be again the zero vector okay so we have the same uh, point for this one this one and this one uh, when we consider the, the upper right corner point right upper corner point which has the components 2 2 2 2 so the product of the matrix A uh, 1 0 3 1 times 2 2 so it becomes uh, to zero plus six two so we have eight two eight two therefore the point will be here eight two and similarly for the this one to zero uh, to zero let's write here one zero three one we find the image of this corner point to zero so it is equal to uh, to zero and the second uh, component is zero therefore we have zero vector so the result will be two zero two zero namely this one and by combining them like this one so we obtain this parallelogram okay so the square becomes a parallelogram under the shear transformation. It is corresponding to shaded parallelogram. And also you can uh, take any point in the square and you will see it is corresponding to a point in the shaded parallelogram. Okay, This point is corresponding to this one. okay t deforms the square as if the top of the square were pushed to the right while the base is held fixed okay and the most general definition of the shaded shear transformation can be written as uh, t of x is the matrix transformation a times x where uh, the matrix A has the entries 1, R, 0, 1. Okay? 1, R, 0, 1. R is bigger than 1, for example. <clears throat> so,
So here we have very important definition uh, a transformation T is linear if uh, we have two properties written here T of u plus v is equal to T of u plus T of v for all u v in the domain of T namely the transformation can be distributed over addition vector addition and also it is distributed over the scalar multiplication namely we can write c uh, the outside of the transformation you see c times t of u c is a number and u is a vector in the domain of t and these properties are satisfied for all vectors in the domain of the transformation if we have this situation so we say uh, it is a linear transformation we have a special set of transformations which is called linear transformations so linear transformations preserve the operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication okay property the first one says that the result of first adding u and v in the domain then applying the transformation uh, is the same as first applying t to u and v and adding t of u and t of v in the codomain. So these two properties lead to the following useful facts. The first one is that if t is a linear transformation then the image of the zero vector is equal to itself always for every linear transformation. <clears throat> we can see easily by using the properties written here. So t of 0, uh, so I am writing the 0 vector in bold, right, like this one. Okay. So it is equal to, <clears throat> actually, we can consider the 0 vector as uh, t of the number 0 let's write in red one number 0 times some vector v ok the number 0 times v will be the 0 vector and 0 is a number here therefore we use the second property namely c can be written in front of the transformation therefore it becomes uh, 0 times t of v t of v And uh, the scalar multiplication, uh, a vector by the number 0 will be equal to always the vector 0, 0 vector. And that's it. We prove this property by using the elementary properties written here. We use the second one. Okay. Also, by using the first one, you can see again uh, the result. And the second useful fact is that uh, the linear transformation of the addition of the vectors c times u plus d times v is equal to c times t of u plus d times t of v. Okay, we can uh, combine the properties written here, the first one and the second one, for all vectors u and v in the domain of t and all scholars c and d. Uh, and we prove this property there is no problem for the second uh, useful fact written here so first we use the first property we have two vectors here let's say w1 and w2 using the first property which means that uh, it pre preserves the operation of vector addition therefore we can write t of w1 plus t of w2 w2 and w1 is equal to c times u 
using the second property C can be written in front of the transformation you see and D can be written uh, similarly therefore we obtain this one so we prove uh, this useful fact actually and also we can say if a transformation satisfies this uh, useful fact for all vectors in the domain and numbers C and D so it must be linear so in order to check that uh, the transformation is linear or not it is enough to say that it satisfies this property okay this is another way to see whether a uh, transformation is linear or not so repeated application of this uh, property for uh, produces a useful generalization which is written here we can use we can find a property for finitely many vectors v1 v2 blah blah vp with scalars c1 c2 blah blah cp so this one is equal to c1 times t of v1 plus c2 times t of v2 blah blah cp times t of vp we can write the scalars in front of the transformation after uh, writing the vectors separately as a vector addition so in engineering and physics this one is referred to as a spur position principle spur position principle we have uh, a nice name for this equality in applied science for example think of the vectors v1 v2 blah blah vp as signals that go into a system and t of v1 t of v2 blah blah t of vp the images of them as the responses of that system to the signals okay the system satisfies the superposition principle if whenever an input is expressed as a linear combination of such signals the system's response is the same linear combination of the responses to the individual signals okay the system satisfies the superposition principle if whenever an input is expressed as a linear combination of such signals for example, we have any put, let's say W, and it is a linear combination of such signals like C1, V1, uh, C2, V2, and so on. So the system's response, namely we have a response for this uh, input W which is written as t of v so to find the response of this uh, input just we find the linear combination of the responses to the individual signals namely c1 t of v1 plus c2 uh, t of v2 and so on So given a scalar R, define a transformation by uh, R times X, just we have a number instead of a matrix. Okay, this is not a matrix transformation. So T is called a contraction when R is between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1, and a dilation when R is bigger than 1. R is bigger than 1. So let's check whether it is a linear transformation or not. It is a linear transformation or not. For example, uh, we should uh, check the properties. The first one says that uh, T of uh, U plus V should be equal to T of U plus T of V. 
So do we have this property for this uh, given linear, given transformation? So let's begin with the left hand side of this equality and we should obtain the right hand side u plus v is equal to according to the definition r times u plus v and we know uh, the scalar multiplication can be distributed over addition which means we have r times u plus r times v and r times u is the image of u under t therefore we write t u and r times v is the image of v under t actually according to the definition therefore we write t of v and we obtain the right hand side of this equality which means that the first property is satisfied what is the second property it says that uh, t c times u should be equal to c times t of u c is a number again by considering the left hand side c times u is equal to according to the definition uh, instead of x here we write c times u, namely r times c times u. And we have the commutativity property for the uh, multiplication of numbers, which means that we can change uh, the places of the uh, numbers r and c here. Therefore, we can write c times r times u, and r times u is the image of the vector u under t so we have c times t of u which means that the second property is also satisfied so the transformation is called contraction or dilation uh, is a linear transformation okay it is a linear transformation for example, we have another matrix here, uh, which is 3 by 3 matrix. And uh, we can consider a transformation for this special matrix. You see this entries here. So we can consider it is a transformation from uh, R cube to uh, R square because uh, the mat uh, and it is given by t of x is a times x 3 by 3 matrix and the number of uh, components of the vector x should be equal to 3 3 by 1 matrix to define the multiplication and what is the result actually we have 3 by 1 vector again let's see uh, the matrix A 1 0 0 0 1 0 and X has the components uh, X1 X2 uh, X3 so using the first column 1 0 0 so we obtain X1 0 0 for the product A times X uh, plus using the second column we have 0 x to 0 and for the third one we have the 0 column which means uh, we have the 0 vector so we don't need to write it and the addition of them will be uh, x1 x2 0 therefore we have x1 x2 zero namely the third component is always zero which means that when we take any arbitrary point in the three-dimensional coordinate system let's see the geometric interpretation of this special transformation matrix transformation 
When we take any vector, any uh, point, actually we can consider every point as a vector by using their position vector. So it corresponds a point in the plane. Okay. This is the connection between the space point and the plane point. Okay. By using the transformation T. When we consider another point here, so it is corresponding to a point on the plane because we have zero for the third component always. Therefore, this is the geometric interpretation of this transformation. Another example. T is defined from R square to itself. So T of X is equal to uh, minus X2 and X1. Okay, where x has the components x1, x2. So the image of this one will be, will be minus x2, x1. Show that t is a linear transformation or not. is a linear transformation or not. <coughs> we will use the properties of the linear transformation, namely this one should satisfy the properties of the linear transformation. The first one says that uh, t of u plus v has to be equal to t of u uh, plus t of v. Uh, if you consider u has the components uh, u1, u2, and v has the components uh, v1, v2. Okay, and the addition of u plus v uh, will be equal to u plus v will be equal to uh, u1 v1 u2 plus v2 and the image the left hand side will be according to the definition so we write the second component as first component with minus uh, u2 plus uh, v2 and the second entry will be the first component of the vector uh, u1 plus v1 okay this is the left side of this equation and it can be rewritten as uh, minus u2 u1 plus minus v2 v1 okay by considering the first entry and by distributing the uh, negative sign over addition we obtain these ones and the first term is actually the image of the vector u under the transformation t therefore we write t of u plus similarly the second term is the image of v under the given transformation which is the right hand side you see therefore the first property is satisfied because the left side is equal to the right hand side of this equation 
for all vectors in the domain. Okay. Similarly, you can obtain uh, the second property by using the components of u, namely you should obtain the equation c times u should be equal to c times t of u. Okay. This is your homework. You can do yourselves. And that's thank you very much for your listening.